So in this video, I'm going to take you through all the changes we already implemented in our apartment that hopefully makes everything look a little bit more designer, cohesive and expensive. The first thing we tackled was the floor, a yellowy finish that made the entire room look a bit dated and tired. We set to work sanding and refinishing the floors to give them a fresh and clean look. We did actually a couple of experiments to figure out how to desaturate the yellowness and unfortunately not all of the experiments were successful, but I'll leave that for another video. So in the end, we ended up with two different types of floor finishes that we were quite happy with, a naturally lightened raw wood and black. We also changed the skirting from this to a much more charming and decorative skirting. It has way more curves and I think in general it just looks a lot more romantic. There was also an ugly gap between the fireplace and the floor so I added some shoe moulding to hide the space. But let's be honest here, the real upgrade would have been some chevron or herringbone pattern timber floor. However, that's probably a renovation project for another day and for another house. For now, we're just happy with the changes we did implement and the new aesthetic quality our apartment has. The next thing we tackled in our renovation were the walls. They had a dated textured finish and paint colours that made the room feel anything but calm. So we took out a lot of old screws in the walls, filled in the holes, sanded down the walls with an ore bottle sander to get rid of the weird texture and repainted everything a crisp clean white. This really transformed the space, making everything feel more open and spacious. It's like having a bigger house for the same price. Ka ching But we're not yet done. In the future, I plan on changing all the wall colours in every individual room and I also want to add a lot of mouldings to the surface of the walls. The colour of the wall plays a huge role in how we feel in the space. Sometimes it can be difficult to achieve a warm and cosy vibe in the room if the space faces north, doesn't get a lot of direct sunlight or is filled with a lot of dark, cold colours, like a black floor for example. Up next on our renovation list, the doors and frames. So they were a little bit yellow in colour, looking worn and just a tad boring. The handles were mismatched and made out of different materials. So I added an architrave all around the existing door frame to give it a more kind of romantic, whimsical and classic look. Then I painted everything white and changed the handles to a cohesive, modern brushed brass finish. In the future, I'm considering adding even more mouldings like an entablature to the dual architrave for an extra touch of elegance. So stay tuned and you'll find out in the future if I actually ever do this. I also want to add some mouldings to the actual door surface and I also have the idea that I might paint the doors and the frames contrasting colours to just give it a little bit more personality. Sockets and switches may not be the most exciting aspect of a renovation, but I think it's these small details that can really make a huge impact in the overall look and feel of a space. So the problem we had was that the sockets and switches were made of plastic that started to look a little bit yellow, so we changed them all out for brass and black fittings. I think it makes the space feel more cohesive and polished. They also feel way better to the touch. The problem I had with the lights were that they were either too practical looking or just non-existent. So when we were choosing the lights, we tried to stick to a limited material palette. In our case, I stuck with a mixture of black, brass, white and grey. So in the spaces with very limited ceiling headroom, we opted for a slim, minimalist roll of spotlights. And in spaces with a high ceiling, we went for some statement hanging pendant lights that created extra drama and celebrated all this headspace. So when you're choosing lights, it's quite important to pay attention to the colour temperature 
This measurement can be seen on all the descriptions of the light products. It basically refers to the overall color appearance of the light, and this can affect the ambience and mood of a room. So for example, when you're looking at warm light, which is between 2700 to 3000 Kelvin, it has a yellow or orange appearance, and this creates a cozy and relaxing ambience, and it's often used in bedrooms, living rooms, and any places that needs a bit of relaxation. Cool light, on the other hand, which is in the range of 3,500 to 5,000 kelvins, has a bluish or white appearance. This color is great for offices, hospitals and workshops, but not for our home. We try to use the same color temperature everywhere, which is 2,700 kelvin. This is because it can look a little bit odd when you use different temperature lights in the same space. If you're interested to see how the rest of the apartment turns out, subscribe and I'll see you again very soon.